Hello, my dear student. Hello, my dear student. Today, I am going to discuss about Edexcel IGCSE Certificate in Physics, Unit 1, Chapter 3, Forces and Movement. Edexcel IGCSE Physics, Pages 28 to 39. All content applies for triple and double science. I am Jahangir Alam here. I am a physics teacher. My contact number is 01717979515. Edexcel specification for this chapter. Unit 1 Forces and Motion, Chapter 3. Forces and movement. After finishing this chapter, you understand that friction is a force that opposes the motion. Know and use the relationship between unbalanced force, mass, and acceleration. Here, force equal to mass into acceleration. Force is denoted by capital F, F equal to M into A. Know and use the relationship weight equal to mass into gravitational field strength small g that means w equals to m into g describe the forces acting on falling objects and explain why the falling object reach a terminal velocity describe experiments to investigate the forces acting on the falling objects such as sycamore seeds or parachute Describe the factors affecting the vehicle stopping distance including speed, mass, road condition and reaction time. First, force, mass and acceleration. Relation between force, mass and acceleration. The force, mass and acceleration of an object are related to by the equation. Unbalanced force equal to mass into acceleration. That means, symbolically, F equal to M into A. Force is measured in Newton. Mass is measured in kg. And acceleration is measured in meter per second square. We can use this formula, triangle. Here, so if we required acceleration, acceleration equals to force by mass, force divided by mass. That means acceleration A equal to F divided by M. And when we required to find out, to find out mass, then we use this formula F divided by A. Taking the equation, here it is uh, an experiment, uh, there is a table result of this experiment or investigation. There is a motion sensor, there is a uh, car fixed to the trolley and a newton meter. So result, resultant force in newtons. When resultant force is 0.5 Newton and mass is 1 kg, mass of the mass of the trolley is 1 kg, then acceleration in meter per second square is 0.5. So mass into acceleration, mass into acceleration 0.5. Mass into acceleration 0. When resultant force is 1 Newton, then mass uh, mass remains same so 1 kg then acceleration will be 1 the mass into acceleration product of mass and acceleration 1 again when we uh, when we apply resultant force is 1.5 newton the mass remains same 1 kg acceleration will be greater 1.5 that means mass into acceleration 1.5 when resultant force is 2 newtons 
and mass is a uh, two kg, two kg. Uh, acceleration equal to one meter per second square. So mass into acceleration two. When resultant force is four newton, mass mass two kg, then acceleration will be two meter per second square. So mass into acceleration four kg meter per second square. Like so, uh, if we apply six newton resultant force, resultant force, a mass two kg, then acceleration will be three three meter per second square. Mass into acceleration six kg meter per second square. Look at the graph here. It is a velocity time graph. Velocity time graph. When we apply force, uh, same force, force remains same, force remains same, but mass differ, then uh, look at the graph, uh, acceleration will be different, will be different. Like, uh, again, when we apply, uh, applied forces, resultant forces same, remain same one, but mass decreases, then, uh, then acceleration will be greater. So, velocity in velocity time graph, the gradient or gradient of the velocity time graph represent the acceleration. Acceleration. That means from this from this data on the graph, it is observed that it is observed that acceleration acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. Inversely proportional. That means if same amount force is applied on same object, uh, uh, different masses, mass, massive object, then acceleration of the object is inversely proportional to the mass. If mass decreases, then acceleration will be will be increased, will be increased. That's why. If uh, force uh, uh, force uh, remains same, but when the mass is uh, two kg, then we get less acceleration. Less acceleration. Look at the look at the data. Look at the data. When when apply, uh, resultant force is one newton, one newton, mass is two kg, then acceleration is less because the velocity time graph. is less is steeper that means gradient of the velocity time graph is less on the other hand force remains same but mass decreases then acceleration will be increased so here the velocity time graph gradient of the velocity time graph is more steeper than the velocity time graph of 2 kg uh, 2 kg object in this way, when the uh, mass of the object becomes 0 0.5, but force remains same, then acceleration will be highest. So, in this experiment, it is observed that acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. There is a graph here, so acceleration and mass. So acceleration, acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. If the mass of the object increases, then acceleration decreases, decreases, reverse inversely. So look at the information below here forces are unbalanced there is an acceleration acceleration depends on directly upon to the net force that means acceleration is directly proportional to the force if force increases acceleration will be increased here uh, look at the second uh, graph second graph second graph 
if force increases acceleration will be greater acceleration will be greater and the second condition the acceleration depends inversely upon the object of the mass so uh, inversely so the acceleration the acceleration the acceleration depends inversely upon the object of the mass object of the mass newton second law newton second law of motion newton second law of motion in a equation e acceleration equals to net force divided by mass so a equals to f divided by m f is the net or net force or resultant force so a small net force and large mass small net force and large mass will give a small acceleration large net force a small mass will give a large acceleration Now question number one. Calculate the force required to cause required to cause a car of mass 1200 kg to accelerate by 5 meter per second square. So question number one. Calculate the force required to cause a car of mass 1200 kg to accelerate by 5 meter per second square. So we have to calculate the required amount force. Required amount force. To, a, uh, to cause a car of mass 1200 kg to accelerate by 5 meter per second square acceleration. We know F equal to M into A. That means force, force equal to mass into acceleration. Here required force equal to mass into acceleration. Here mass 1200 kg and acceleration is uh, 5 meter per second square. So 1200 into uh, 5, 6000 Newton. So here required force is 6,000 Newton. Required force is 6,000 Newton. Now question number two. Calculate the acceleration produced. Calculate the acceleration produced by a force of 200 Newton on a mass of 4 kg. 4 kg. We know F equal to force force net force equal to mass into acceleration so uh, a equal to f divided by m we uh, we have to calculate the acceleration acceleration produced by a force of 200 newton so 200 divided by 4 kg so result will be 50 meter per second so acceleration produced 50 meter per second square acceleration by a force of 200 Newton on a mass of 4 kg. Now question number 3. Question number 3. Calculate the force that accelerates a mass of 300 kg from rest to 6 meter per second over a time of 3 seconds. Very important question here. Calculate the force. Calculate the force that accelerate of mass accelerates a mass of 300 kg from rest to 6 meter per second over a time of 3 seconds. First, uh, we know acceleration equal to change in velocity. Change in velocity. So here change in velocity raised to 6 meter per second. So uh, 6 uh, final velocity minus initial velocity. This is the change of velocity 6 minus 0 meter per second divided by time 3 seconds. So acceleration will be 2 meter per second square. 2 meter per second square. So required force, required force will be, required force will be, required force, required force, force if equal to mass into acceleration. Here mass mass is 300 kg, mass is 300 kg and acceleration 2 meter per second square, 2 meter per second square. So force will be 600 Newton. So 
required force will be 600 newton required force will be 600 newton now try to complete the table here there is a formula triangle formula triangle here this is the formula triangle F is the force, A, M is the mass, A is the acceleration. Well, we have to calculate the force, force F equal to MA. F equal to M into A. Here mass is 4 kg and acceleration is 6. So 4 into 6, 4 into 6, 4, 6 are 24. So, uh, required force will be 24 Newton. So, required force will be 24 Newton. Required force will be 24 Newton. Then, now, force uh, 200, acceleration uh, is given, uh, acceleration is 5 meter per second square. And we have to find out the mass. We know mass equal to, mass equal to force divided by acceleration. Here, what is the amount of force? Force 200 divided by 5 200 divided by 4 200 divided by 5 it will be 40 mass will be 40 kg so 40 kg mass will be 40 kg then in third question question number 3 question number 3 we have to calculate the acceleration here now acceleration acceleration a equal to acceleration a equal to force divided by mass force divided by mass here force 600 newton 600 newton and mass 30 kg 600 newton divided by 30 kg so 20 meter per second square so acceleration will be 20 meter per second square now uh, third uh, question number four fourth question here uh, mass is given in gram gram but we know uh, the si unit of mass is kg so we have to convert this gram into kg divided by 1000 so it will be 0 0.05 kg so 0 0.05 kg we have to find out the force force equal to mass into acceleration mass into acceleration here mass 0 0.005 into 400 400 so answer will be 2 newton so it will be 2 newton 2 newton here so it is 2 newton that's why it is 2 newton then another thing uh, question number 5 question number 5 here mass is given 100 gram so we have to convert this 100 gram into kg divided by 1000 10, 100 divided by 1000 kg so it will be 0 0.1 kg again uh, look at the acceleration here acceleration 50 centimeter per second 50 centimeter and force here force 5 newton so uh, we record uh, we record acceleration acceleration equal to force force 5 divided by 0.1 so 50, 50, 5, uh, 5 divided by, 5 divided by 0 0.1, 50 uh, meter per second square. So in uh, centimeter, it will be 5,000 centimeter per second square so it will be 5000 sorry mistake 5000 5000 centimeter per second square 5000 centimeter per second square now next one car forces this uh, car 
move to move a uh, left direction so motive force of engine uh, works uh, in the left direction so it moves uh, left direction with a velocity and there is a resistive force there are two type of resistive force one is friction friction acts here frictional force frictional force frictional force here and then there also air resistance here air resistance or drag force air resistance air resistance or drag force drag force drag force and also said it is a driving force driving force given by engine of the car driving force driving force there also works uh, weight weight of the car downwards weight of the car weight or gravitational force or gravitational gravitational force and normal reaction force acts uh, where uh, the car in contact so normal reaction force acts upward upward from this four wheels of the car upward normal reaction force r normal reaction force r So when the vehicle uh, travels at a steady speed, the frictional force balances the driving force. To slow the car, the engine force is reduced by the releasing the throttle and the frictional force is increased by applying the brakes. Stopping a car, stopping a car. The total distance, stopping distance, total distance required to stop a car. The stopping distance is equal to the thinking distance plus braking distance. So what is the stopping distance? The sum of thinking distance and braking distance. Sum of thinking distance plus braking distance. So stopping uh, in a short stopping distance, stopping distance, stopping distance. distance equal to equal to thinking distance distance plus breaking distance so remember stopping distance this this is the equation or find out the total overall stopping distance stopping distance so stopping distance equal to thinking distance plus braking distance look at the uh, picture above uh, if the car moves with a velocity 30 mile per hour or 13 meter per second then then, then thinking distance of the driver, thinking distance 30 feet and braking distance 45 feet. That means uh, about uh, total, total 75 feet or 22.5 meter. When the car, when the car moves with uh, velocity 50 mile per hour or 22 meter per second, 22 meter per second, then uh, thinking distance Will be 50 feet and braking distance will be 125 feet so total stopping distance 175 feet that means 52.5 meter if the car moves with uh, 70 mile per hour that means 31 meter per second then thinking distance is 70 feet and braking distance is 245 feet that means total stopping distance 315 feet that means 96 meter so uh, 
to overall uh, stopping distance depends on the speed of the car speed of the vehicle now reaction time reaction time reaction time is a measure of how quickly an organism organism like a driver can respond to a particular situation stimulus reaction time has been widely studied as its per, uh, practical impl implication may be of great consequence slower than the normal reaction time while driving can have grave results the reaction time is the time it takes for the person to see the event and press the brakes of the car so reaction time is the time it takes for a driver to see a hazard or event and press the brakes of the car when the person is driving the car he see an event in front of him now the time taken by him to see the event and then move his feet of the pedal and uh, and to the brake and then push the brake all uh, all add up to reaction time braking time the approximate uh, length of time a vehicle takes to come to a complete stop after brakes are applied so this two time is very important two time is very important here one is braking time another is reaction time reaction time so reaction time is the time it takes for a driver or a person to see the event and press the brakes of the car braking time the approximate length of time a vehicle takes to come to a complete stop after the brakes are applied the distance the car travels as the driver brain decide when the car needs to stop until the brakes are applied is called thinking distance so what is thinking distance the distance the car travel as the driver brain decide when the car needs to stop until the brakes are applied is called thinking distance Braking distance. Braking distance is the distance the car travels once the brakes are applied until it is stopped. The stopping distance. The stopping distance uh, is the thinking distance plus braking distance. Very important thing. There are three terms here. One is thinking distance, braking distance, then overall stopping distance. Now thinking distance. Let first start with the thinking distance. Thinking distance, which is shown in the equation two. The car. Velocity can be thought of being constant during the short amount of time required for the driver reaction. So all we need is speed times speed times reaction time to get the thinking distance. So thinking distance generally you can write thinking distance. Thinking distance. equal to equal to speed of the vehicle speed into reaction time of the driver reaction time of driver driver on the other hand braking distance average speed into braking time that means here initial speed into final speed divided by 2 into t t is the braking time the braking time remember it is braking time Breaking time. On the other hand, thinking distance, speed, V into reaction time. Reaction time.
Now, thinking distance and breaking distance. Remember, there are uh, there are the distance we are uh, delaying with, delaying with, not times. Thinking distance, the distance the car travels between the driver seeing and danger and act acting upon it. Press the brakes. Example: Press the brakes. Breaking distance, the distance the car travels until it is stopped. Once the brakes have been applied, so the distance traveled by the car or vehicle until it is stopped. Once the brakes have been applied, due to delay in human reaction, However, there is always a time lag between the seeing a hazard and breaking the car. This time interval is known as reaction time, which is about 0.75 seconds and may vary widely for different person. During the reaction time, the car travels a distance known as reaction distance or thinking distance. Or thinking distance. So thinking distance or reaction distance. distance or reaction distance equal to speed into reaction time but after the reaction time the brake is applied and the car decelerates it takes another distance which is known as braking distance for the car to stop completely the total distance that the car has traveled after the driver seeing the hazard is known as stopping distance it is equal to stopping distance equal to reaction distance plus braking distance so braking distance equal to average speed into braking time look at the graph here graph here uh, this is a velocity time graph for a vehicle here the car moves with a constant velocity v1 and um, the time t1 it is a, it is a time it is a time reaction time so reaction time is t1 here it is t1 it is t1 and uh, from the t1 the completely stop it is uh, this portion is t2 breaking time and uh, break apl apl applied here break is applied here break is applied then uh, speed of the vehicle decreases with time so area a1 area area yellow colored uh, portion uh, distance travel in the thinking distance or reaction reaction time thinking or reaction time it is known as thinking <clears throat> area a2 the distance travel in the braking time it is known as braking distance so slower response and faster speed faster speed slower if the reaction time of the driver is more that means uh, slower uh, response time uh, that means reaction time and uh, if the car moves with uh, higher speed or faster speed then area area a1 and area a2 is more so reaction time is here uh, more reaction time is greater than the first previous one example so thinking distance and breaking distance both will be We should make the stopping distance as small as possible to prevent an accident. Both the reaction distance and braking distance uh, distance depends on the initial speed of the car. Initial speed of the car. So higher the speed of the car, the longer distance it has to travel before coming to race. Speeding is often major cause of traffic accident, accident because the driver cannot stop the car in time in an emergency. The braking distance also depend on friction between the tires and road. It would increase greatly if the road is wet or or track, uh, tires of poor quality or brake system brake pad is 
poor quality that means brake system is uh, condition of the brake system is poor now now factors affecting stopping distance factor affecting stopping distance the reaction time of the driver this will increase if the driver is tired distracted or has consumed alcohol or drugs increase increasing reaction time increases the thinking distance that means if the driver is tired distracted that means in multitasking mode or uh, intoxicated then reaction time will increase so as well as thinking distance will be increased the speed of the car the greater the speed greater the speed the greater will be both the thinking and braking distance doubling the speed increases the overall stopping distance by about four times very important four times so doubling the speed the doubling the speed increase the overall stopping distance by about four times the mass of the car and its content the greater the mass the greater will be the braking distance the condition of the road with an icy roads will cause the braking distance to increase the condition of the vehicle condition of the brake system own brakes or own tires will both increase the braking distance choose appropriate words to fill in the gaps below when the car is moving at dash speed the engine force is equal to the resistive force when the car is moving at at steady speed the engine force is equal to the resistive force that means forces are balanced when the balance force acts on a, an object then object moves with constant speed the stopping distance of the car is equal to is equal to the thinking distance plus the braking distance the tiredness and alcohol and drugs are all likely to increase the thinking distance a car traveling at 60 mile per hour will require roughly four times stopping distance of car traveling at 30 mile per hour 30 mile per hour that means if the speed becomes double then overall stopping distance will be roughly equal to four times now mass and weight what is mass mass is the total amount of matter or atoms or molecules or ions present in an object it is a fundamental quantity mass is measured in kilogram the mass of an object is the same on the moon as on the earth so mass is a fundamental quantity so it never changes from place to place on the other hand weight is the force of gravity on an object what is measured in newton the weight of an object on the moon is about 1/6 that on the earth surface a newton meter is used to determine the weight of the person so there is a formula uh, weight weight equal to weight equal to mass into gravitational field strength gravitational field strength strength field strength 
palsy so w equals to m into g very important formula remember palsy is the gravitational field strength now acceleration due to gravity the acceleration due to gravity g varies with planet moon star and depends on the height of an object so uh, acceleration due to gravity gravity on earth surface is 10 meter per second square on the moon surface it is 16 about 16 mars 3.7 jupiter about 24 pluto uh, 0.7 the sun about 270 meter per second square now gravitational field strength this is an alternative way of measuring the strength of the gravity the gravitational field strength is the equal to the gravitational force exerted per kilogram so so gravitational field strength is the equal to the gravitational force exerted per kilogram so near the earth it is 10 newton per kg 10 newton per kg here remember gravitational field strength gravitational field strength so small g equal to gravitational force force divided by mass so g equal to f divided by m so gravitational field strength so unit what will be the unit so newton per kg newton per kg because the unit of force is newton that means gravitational force gravitational force and uh, mass is kg if the in most cases the gravitational field strength Uh, in newton per kg is the numerical equal to the acceleration due to gravity hence they both uses the same symbol this is the same symbol calculate the weight so uh, weight equal to mass into gravitational field strength so w equals to m into g weight is uh, uh, measured in newton mass is measured in kg the si unit of mass is kg uh, the si unit of uh, weight is newton the gravitational uh, field strength uh, or acceleration due to gravity is meter per second square so on at surface a mass of 1 kg uh, has a weight of 10 newton weight of 10 newton now falling object when an object uh, falls through air some other fluid initially the only significant force acting on it it is the uh, it is uh, is the downward pulling of gravity that means weight on the earth it will initially accelerate downwards at 10 meter per second square acceleration so object in air accelerate at 10 meter per second square acceleration that means uh, only weight force acts on the object there is an interesting phenomenon uh, who is right two important scientists came up with different ideas about how fast object fall towards the earth your job is to plan an experiment to find out who was right according to the aristotle the heavier object is is the heavier object is the faster it will fall to the ground according to the aristotle the heavier the object the heavier the object heavier the object is the faster it will fall to the ground a galileo uh, galileo galileo uh, the object of different mass that are dropped from the same height will reach the ground at the same time so tell me who is right so uh, we have to uh, investigate or 
uh, investigate this uh, two phenomena two important scientists came up with different ideas about how first object fall towards the earth your job is to plan an experiment to find out who was right okay uh, question do heavier object fall faster than lighter ones when they starting from the same position does air resistance matter does air resistance matter if the free fall motion has a constant acceleration what is the acceleration and how was it found how do you solve problem involving free fall free fall free fall summary in vacuum all objects fall at the same speed in vacuum all objects fall at the same speed in air heavier object fall faster than the lighter object if the heavy object and a light object are released at the same time initially they may appear to fall at the same speed when the light object reaches terminal velocity the have uh, the heavier object will uh, still be accelerated that's why very interesting thing Now, uh, two parachuters, a uh, green uh, man heavier than the blue man, weight, weight uh, of the green man is, uh, mass of the green man or weight of the green man is, uh, uh, is more, so heavier than the blue, uh, blue man. Each with the same size of shoot, parachute. Let's ask the, uh, a series of questions. First, task if there was no air resistance who would get to ground first answer both at the same time both at the same time they both began to fall together in the first few moments for which uh, for which is the air drag force greater air resistance depends on area same for each and the Uh, speed same for each so initial both experience the same drag force r or air resistance r who attains terminal velocity first that means who is stop accelerating first when r drag force becomes equal to the weight then there is a zero net force since blue weight is less blue attains terminal velocity first very important thing. blue blue attains terminal velocity first note as they accelerate as they accelerate the drag force increases because speed increases but after terminal terminal speed reaches r is constant who has larger terminal velocity so who reaches ground first green he reaches uh, his terminal velocity later after a, uh, acceleration longer so is fast air resistance what is air resistance when something falls air resistance acts in the opposite direction as the force of gravity force of gravity air resistance acts in the opposite direction of the object motion so what is air resistance when any uh, object moves through air medium the molecules of the air gives a resistive force against the motion of the object that force is known as air resistance in general sometimes we use this term as a drag force air resistance the air also helps to slow down moving object this force is called air resistance air resistance is sometimes called drag force air resistance affected by speed of the motion area of the contact type of surface shape of the object give an example of air resistance being useful <laughs> parachute give an example of air resistance being problem racing car non free fall uh, example a skydiver jumps from plane Weight is only force until air resistance acts. 
as false speed uh, as falling speed increases air resistance on the uh, driver uh, builds up net uh, force is reduced and the acceleration becomes less whenever air resistance equal to the driver's weight net force is zero and acceleration terminates the driver reaches a terminal velocity then continues uh, the fall of constant speed As the object speed up, frictional force, uh, frictional uh, forces such as air resistance becomes greater. The faster the object moves, eventually the resultant force on the object will be zero when the frictional force is equal to the weight of the object. The object then moves at a constant speed that, that is called terminal velocity. So, what is terminal velocity? The maximum achieved velocity of a free falling object. At which the downwards weight force is equal to the upward drag force. So, what is terminal velocity? The maximum achieved velocity of a free falling object at which the downwards weight force is exactly equal to the upward drag force or air resistance. That constant velocity, that achieved constant velocity, is known as terminal velocity. Look at the diagram here object in liquid falls at co uh, constant velocity or steady speed that means here resultant force is zero resultant force is zero so acceleration acceleration equal to zero resultant force is zero resultant force is zero and acceleration is zero Velocity time graph for a uh, falling object. So object in uh, object in air, uh, it does not uh, reaches the terminal. If uh, the object does not reach does not reach the terminal velocity, then it will give a, a straight line because it is still uh, accelerating. On the other hand, if the object uh, in liquid, it reaches a terminal velocity about one meter per second because there is a higher drag force. Parachuting. A parachutist will have two different terminal velocity. Before opening the parachute, it is about 60 uh, meter per second, about 140 mile per hour. Afterwards, due to the much greater drag force, the terminal velocity is about 5 meter per second, uh, that means 12 mile per hour. So when parachute, uh, parachutists open the parachute, then drag force increases greatly, then drag force uh, balanced to it uh, with weight for a lower velocity, that velocity is known as terminal velocity. So falling object and terminal velocity. Although the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square, or approximately 10 meter, approximately, approximately 10 meter per second square downwards, the object do not uh, maintain this acceleration in air because air resistance acts upward. Important uh, explanation of the terminal velocity. As the falling object speeds up, air resistance acting upward increases this causes the unbalanced force and acceleration uh, acceleration to decrease eventually the object will reach a speed where the upward force due to the air resistance balances the weight of the object from this point the object will maintain a constant velocity we call this terminal velocity So terminal velocity is very important for IGCAC 
O level physics also important for A level physics also. Uh, so give more uh, attention in this uh, section. So accelerating downwards, uh, that means gravity or weight acts uh, downwards. As the speed increases, uh, so uh, step number one, uh, when the parachute is just jump from the plane or helicopter or uh, aircraft, then he or she accelerates down, uh, downwards because only weight force acting downwards. As the speed increases, so drag force also increases. So unbalanced force uh, becomes less. Until the drag e equals to weight, no, uh, no acceleration. So when, when uh, two forces becomes uh, balanced, that means downwards weight force uh, and upward drag force becomes equal, that means resultant force is zero. So no acceleration and it achieves terminal velocity. It's still falling, uh, uh, but uh, is sudden uh, deceleration when the parachute opens. So when parachute is open, his or her parachute, then suddenly increases the upward drag force, but weight force remains same. So uh, for a less uh, velocity decreases and uh, drag decreases again, there is a new mass smaller terminal velocity. So uh, he or she achieves a new terminal velocity after opening the parachute. No acceleration, the ground exert a force to balance the ground. Now the speed against the time graph for a falling parachute, a parachutist. In reality, the gravity is not the only force acting on the body falling through air. There is also air resistance. So number one portion, uh, look at the graph, uh, look at the uh, speed time graph. The parachute is jumped from the aircraft when uh, aircraft with his parachute closed. The speed increases, uh, air resistance increases, the acceleration decreases. And it achieves a uh, uh, three and four portion, it achieves a terminal speed. That means air resistance e equal to the weight, that ne net force equal to zero, that means acceleration equal to zero. Uh, in uh, section five, the parachute, uh, parachutist open his parachute, the air resistance increases suddenly. The parachutist is start to decelerate rapidly, speed decreases. The parachutist is still slowing down. In six portion, uh, the, the parachutist is still slowing down, Seven and eight, uh, the parachutist reaches the terminal speed and which less than the speed in three. That means before opening his or her parachute. It's very important for I, G, C, A, C, A, Edexcel and Cambridge. Edexcel and Cambridge O-level physics, very important. Look at look at this portion um, very carefully. Now velocity time graph of of a parachutist. Uh, initially acceleration uh, 10 meter per second square then uh, reaches a terminal velocity then parachute opened and decreases uh, uh, upward uh, upward uh, after opening uh, his or her parachute uh, suddenly increases the amount of drag force or air distance then for a uh, velocity decreases and achieve a new terminal velocity second terminal velocity for a lower velocity, second terminal at ground reaches. There is a question for you. It's very important. 
complete the skydiving stages worksheet level the force so uh, uh, only weight force acts only weight force acts weight or gravitational force then uh, air resistance drag force drag force drag force and weight becomes equal so it is uh, equal that means resultant force resultant force becomes zero acceleration zero zero then uh, weight remains same weight remains same uh, now uh, sudden, uh, when parachute is open his parachute or her parachute then drag force increases drag force increases Drag force increases. So drag force is greater than weight. Weight, and that means resultant force is upward. Upward resultant force. So I. Uh, for a lower velocity again uh, weight and upward weight and upward drag force becomes equal again drag force velocity decreases velocity decreases decreases for a lower velocity velocity uh, drag force becomes equal to the weight so resultant force is zero here resultant force here again zero and that achieved velocity is known as terminal velocity that achieved velocity is known as terminal velocity here Now choose appropriate words to fill in the gaps below. So weight is the dash gravity on an object. Weight is the force of gravity on an object. Weight is equal to the dash, uh, equal to the mass of the object in kilogram. Multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Near the earth surface, a mass of one kilogram weight, 10 newtons. When an object falls through a fluid, it initially accelerates because of gravity. As its speed increases, so, so do the frictional forces. Eventually, the frictional forces are equal to the weight of an object. At this stage, the dash forces Resultant force on the object is zero and the object falls with its terminal force.